I'm, I'm right there with you, man. And speaking of family, we've got Steve Rosenberg. Steve is the author of Going Full Speed, the Sean Taylor stories. And Steve, I know you worked on this book a while ago, and some of our listeners are familiar with it. But for those that are not, how did the idea of the book come about? I met Pete Taylor on the field at a Redskins-Dolphins game when his son Gabe was about 10 years old. And they were honoring him and his peewee team that week. The Dolphins were as the uh, theme of the, of the month, I guess. And I'm standing on the field, and my son was wearing a University of Miami Sean Taylor jersey. He taps me on the shoulder, and he says, you see that guy over there? I said, yeah. He said, do you know who that is? I said, no, should I? He said, that's Sean Taylor's father. I said, how do you know? He goes, look at him. He looks just like him. I said, do you want to meet him? He goes, yeah. I said, all right, stay, stay right there. And I walked over to the gentleman. I said, are you Mr. Taylor? He said, yes, I am. I said, oh, it's very nice to meet you. I said, you see that kid over there? He goes, yeah, nice jersey. So, <laughs> so I knew we had something special immediately, like after one sentence. <laughs> so, so we start talking I said do me a favor he's a huge fan of Sean can you just say hello shake his hand do, you know take a picture or something sure absolutely Gaby come here we're gonna take a picture so his little son comes running over with his cousin I guess and uh, they come over and uh, we take a picture and that classic iconic photo is on the inside cover of the hardback version of going full speed. It's the first picture that you see is when my son met, uh, we all met Pete at the same time. So we got to talking. I said, uh, you know, I said, uh, you know, I'm, I told him who I was, an ad agency up in Washington, D.C. And I worked with a lot of players. Of course, he knew every single one of them. Uh, and, um, I said, you know, maybe we can do something together. Let's exchange information. Maybe I can get you some endorsements or, you know, something. So, uh, we exchanged information. They ushered, it off, ushered us off the field. And before you know it, we started communicating and to make a long story short, after a while, we decided the best way to go about doing this is a book. Now, I won't exactly say I'm an author because it's really Pete Taylor's story with a whole bunch of other stories from people you will definitely recognize and some you won't, like teachers, family members, coaches, players, roommates, teammates, and everybody tells their favorite Sean Taylor story. So I consider myself more of an orchestrator and some side comments uh, along the way to kind of piece the story together. But the story itself is on Pete Taylor's timeline from when he started, how he came to come to the United States, talked a little about his upbringing, his father, uh, blah, 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 all the way through the end of Sean's life. And then at the end, I asked everybody that we spoke to, all the interviewers, where were you? when you found out what happened to Sean. And let me tell you something, most of them cried. When I was speaking to them, they cried. When we were typing the book and editing the book, we cried. And it's just, it's so emotional. Oh, I forgot to tell you. When I met him for the first time, I'm talking to him by myself. And all of a sudden I start crying like a baby. And he puts his hand behind me and taps me on the shoulder, he goes, it's okay. It's okay. Don't worry. It'll be fine. And I'm like, who is this guy? So like I said, we had this instant rapport. We talked about doing the book. It was, it's a very emotional experience. It's a very emotional read. And I tell everybody who's a fan to make sure they read this book with a box of Kleenex. I can, I can imagine. And I've read the book and you and I actually were supposed to sit down when you were gathering content for the book, but you had a ton of stories already for it. And each and every one of us that are Washington fans have our favorite memory of Sean. And I'm, I'm getting choked up over here on my end, just thinking about remembering where I was when I heard the news of what had happened to him. 
But how long did it take you to gather the content for the book itself? Um, thank God for Pete Taylor. He has a Rolodex <laughs> beyond belief. And uh, the interesting thing was that every single person that he spoke to said the same thing. Anything for Sean. Anything for Sean. Over and over, we heard anything for Sean. And they were more than... They, they all wanted to participate and they all wanted to share the stories. Now I promised each one of them that they were going to be recorded and they were going to, their words were going to be in the book word for word. In other words, if you curse, it's going in the book, but I will tell people ahead of time, if foul language specifically <clears throat> the N word says so that bothers you, don't read this part. I, I put that right at the head of the chapter. Because I know it's a very sensitive, words are very sensitive to a lot of people. And I, I just let people know, and I let the people that I interviewed know, whatever you say, how you say it, it's going in the book. I am not going to edit you. And that went a long way. And so the gathering of all that information, I would say, took about mm, 13, 14 months. The longest part of gathering the information and what were the approvals for the photos by the NFL? They had to approve really? all the pictures. In fact, on the cover, if you, you have the book, you'll notice that you cannot see the NFL badge right underneath the neck, uh, V-neck on, on the jersey. Mm -hmm. They made us cut it, cut it off because it's an implied endorsement. And they did not endorse the, having the logo being part of this book. Now, if you go in the book, and there are 60 pictures in there, by the way, um, uh, you, you can see they, they approved it for the inside, but not the outside. And it took forever for them. So I said, you know, from beginning to end, it took about two years with the editing, with the picture gathering, and we had to get sign off from uh, the Miami Herald. We had to get pictures from the Reds uh, at the time. We had to get pictures from Washington Redskins. They had to prove everything. We had to sign off on them that this is what we're going to use them for. We're not going to use them for publicity, blah, 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 blah. And that's how come they let us do this. So about the answer to your question is about two years. It's a lot of red tape to have to go through. And I can only imagine a monstrosity like the NFL, how much you have to deal with getting small things like that approved. But I'm looking at a copy of the book here. For those of you that have not read the book, you can get a copy. My recommendation is at caneswear.com. Those of you out there, I put a tweet of it on there. And if you're watching our YouTube page, you can actually find it here. But can you share why people should go to Caneswear for Steve? Why that is a particular site that's got something special for fans? Well, as I was telling you earlier today, I said, I want people to shop around because everybody thinks they're getting a deal on Amazon. Trust me, you're not. If you go to Amazon today and you look for going full speed, it'll come up hardback $49.99, okay? If you go to Barnes & Noble, it'll go list price $31.99. If you go to Caneswear, C-A-N-E-S-W-E-A, r.com and type in going full speed not only is the book cheaper there right now on sale for 29.99 but it's autographed by me p taylor and bonus gabriel taylor sean's youngest brother who also plays uh, safety he plays football safety for rice university so you'll get three signatures you cannot get there any get that anywhere else so you'll get an autographed copy for cheaper now, if you just want to read it and you don't care about the autographs, you can get it uh, in a Kindle version or an e-book e version for $2.99. That's like less than a cup of coffee. So uh, if you want to read it, it's a great read. Like I said, make sure you have a box of tissues because some parts will make you laugh. Some parts will make you cry. And some parts you'll say, did that really happen? And the answer is, oh, yeah. <laughs> And for those of you out there looking for ideas for the holidays for your loved ones, there's two books that I can't recommend enough. One is by a friend of mine, Rick Snyder, 100 Things Commanders Fans Should Know and Do Before They Die. 
And the other one is this book by Steve. I mean, Sean means a lot to all of us. The team honored him this past Sunday, being the 15th year anniversary of his passing. And Steve, I know you've become close with the family. You were there last year when they retired his number. You were there this weekend with the family when they had the memorial installation installed there and the event at the team store and everything else. Can you share really how all of that was? This meeting uh, the Taylors in 2013, the Rosenbergs and the Taylors had become very close. When we go to our place in Florida, we get together for lunches and dinners and parties and what have you. Uh, when I tell you we are close, we are family. They treat us like part of the family. We treat them like part of the family. And it's a very unusual relationship because I feel like, and when other people meet him for the first time, it's like you're in the presence of royalty. It's like he, Pete Taylor is a superstar. And he didn't play for the Redskins slash commanders. He's the dad. And people revere him. And he's so nice. And the family is so nice. Long story short, they invited us to, they invited us to come and be part of the celebration. So we spent the entire weekend with them. And, um, you know, even when, when, when Gabe Taylor was introducing my son around, he goes, this is my other brother, Glenn. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's so friendly. You know, it's so, it, I can't describe the feeling you get when you're with that part of the family. Uh, <clears throat> so if you go to Twitter and you go to Meow Say Tongue, M E O W S A Y, tongue, like stick your tongue out, you'll see some of the pictures that I posted from the weekend. And it's like a behind the scenes look at what it was like being with the Taylors, uh, people chasing after Gabe, people chasing after Jackie. You know, Jackie, it was her weekend. Jackie, Baby Jackie, as we call her. Her mom's named Jackie as well. Baby Jackie Taylor was the one who did the coin flip. She was the honorary captain. It was part of the coin flip at the beginning of the game. Well, after that, the press was after her all over the place. So she was in the suite. And, you, you know, the cameras just kept coming and coming. And, the, the, you know, the journalists just wanted to talk to Gabriel and uh, Gail because he's playing football. And he's in the shadow of Sean and, of course, um, baby Jackie, because she's the only surviving daughter of Sean. And she's about 16 and a half. And uh, her mom, Jackie, was uh, a soccer player at VT. At, um, VT. And so is the daughter. Baby Jackie's also a soccer player and excellent, from what I understand. Never saw her play. But I've been watching Gabe play basketball and football since he was 10 years old. I mean, I used to go to games with them. Like I said, when we're part of the family, we get invited to all kinds of things. I actually saw him playing at Gulliver. And I just want to make a quick mention of something. <clears throat> Three players that passed away have got shot at, at the Virginia Tech. One of them was Deshaun Perry. And I know his dad. When you see news about shootings at schools and what have you, it's like, oh, okay, another shooting. But when you know the family, like I do, I didn't know Deshaun, but I know his dad. It is the saddest thing in the world. And I, it, it, for me, that brought back memories of Sean Taylor getting shot and killed. Uh, it's just such a sad, sad, sad thing. But what I'm trying to bring out is when Deshaun was a senior at Gulliver, he played for Gulliver in Miami. He played on the same team, the football team, with Gabe Taylor. So it's extra sad for me knowing that that was part of the Taylor legacy. So when I called, when I found out what happened, I called Pete. I said, hey, did you hear what happened? He goes, yeah, I'm on my way over there right now. So they're still close with the Perrys. And he, he was heading over. So I talked to him when he was hitting the driveway. So it's, it's all one big family. And that's what I'm trying to bring out. It's like you, you, you can revere these people, but you've got to understand that the people that are left are the ones that are suffering. The families are suffering. The Perrys are so distraught right now. And I really wanted to talk about that too, because we forget. 
we forget that these are when you boo them on the field and scream at them and throw things at them. Fine, they're players, they make a lot of money. But, you know, but they have families. They're people like, I hate to say this, the old cliche, like you and me. They're just people, you know, and they make mistakes. So please, please, folks, keep that in mind when you decide to scream at the players or yell at this, yell at the referees. It's just yeah, it's... people don't they don't they don't understand and they don't realize what they're doing. And that's part of this whole thing, which I'm sure you're going to talk about, about the negativity surrounding this weekend, which was just sad. Uh, that's definitely a great word of advice there, Steve. And for those that don't know, and it's something that we've been trying to stress here on the mess hall and just all over social media, is that Jackie helped design and curate the Sean Taylor Legacy Project limited edition gear. And all, let me repeat, all of the proceeds from the sale of all that merchandise is going to help prevent gun violence. We lost Sean to gun violence. I mean, he was not supposed to be in Tampa at the time. He was hurt and missed the game that week and was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And he passed away defending the life of Jackie and then his you know, girlfriend at the time. And it's just such a tragic incident. And now, you know, with Gabe's classmate at UVA and losing him to gun violence, and it's just so prevalent in our society today that if you get a chance to go out there and get some of this gear, those of you that could not make it to the stadium this weekend, you can grab some of it from fanatics, you know, to try and help keep Sean's legacy alive, but also knowing that his daughter, who was too young to remember what had happened, is trying to make her impact on keep her father's legacy alive by hopefully helping save others from these senseless crimes and senseless acts. But Steve, I really appreciate you jumping on here with us today. Thank you for taking the time. And one of these days, I'm going to get a chance to actually sit down with you, maybe a Bob and Edis or another one of the diners around town and break some bread with you <laughs> and share some of my stories with Sean. Because I've got a couple when I used to do a show out at Redskins Park and I got to know him. And every time I hear people talk about him, I get goosebumps and I get choked up because he meant that much to us. And... So like you said, those fans out there that are turning this weekend into a negative, think about how that's making the Taylor family feel. Because there's a clip that I'm going to cut up and play. Jackie was most proud of the Adidas cleats that the statue had on because it was the small things like that that her dad did, and they honored that before people start ridiculing and calling things out that they don't know anything about. But is there any lasting word that you want to leave us with, Steve? Well, before I do that, uh, you said we can meet at one of the local diners. I have a better idea. After the season's over, I want to invite you and, and uh, Mrs. Tailgate to come join us in Florida. You can hang out with us. We can actually do the stories with Papa Taylor. How does that sound? That sounds a lot better than being frozen up here. Yeah. Hopefully February. It's a lot warmer down there, pal. <laughs> it definitely is. It definitely is, Steve. I, I've got audio and video of this now, so I'm going to have to hold you to it, and you'll definitely see me down there in Miami or well, down in Florida. My friend, and I consider you my friend, I've known you for quite a long time, and I am honored and privileged to be part of this podcast, by the way. And so I want to thank you for that. And uh, yeah, so come on down and hang out with us down there in Florida. And you might not want to leave, huh? you know, because there's room <laughs> for you. There's room for you in my place. And uh, uh, we're right across the street from the beach. So you like the sand and the water? Look on the back, look, go out on the balcony. You'll see it right from the balcony. Uh, yes. So uh, this book, I call it A Labor of Love. <clears throat> and um, you need to, if you're a fan and you don't have this book yet, or if you're looking for a fantastic gift for the Commander's fan, the Sean Taylor fan, the memory of Sean in your family or your friends, this is what you need to do. You need to go to canesware.com, get that autographed copy um, by the three of us, Pete, myself, and Gabe Taylor. That, Gabe, tell him that autographs can be worth something one day. You'll see. 
uh, and uh, read it and uh, then uh, read it again. It's it's that good. Uh, we have um, mostly five star reviews on Amazon, and uh, you know the fans just uh, just love this thing. And um, so thank you once again for having me on. Uh, I'd love to come on again one day. You can ask me some more questions. And I've got uh, some news for you, Delegate Ted. All I right. spoke to Gabe yesterday about the podcast, and he's definitely going to come on. No, I appreciate that, Steve. We're looking forward to having him on and having you back on as well. This has been a pleasure and really Anytime. the honor is all ours, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot, man. Have a great week and uh, happy holidays to you. All right. Go Commanders. You take care. Really appreciate Steve Rosenberg jumping on with us to hear. And I mean, it means a lot that he decided to join us. We are looking forward to having him and Gabe Taylor on, Sean's little brother, in the future.